Day 25 of the Quarantine Reviews, Edmund begins the vast process of making evening and night. Another different one for you this time around for a very key reason. It's going to be a two-parter due to this being a double album, and how that double album manifests is rather intriguing. There's a bit of a backstory going on here. So if you're unfamiliar with VOST, which stands for Visual Audio Sensory Theatre, they're a bit of a genre unto their own. They're mainly based in electro-rock, but they draw upon a lot of different influences from thrash metal, industrial, gothic. They kind of run the gamut of just exploring and expanding how they sound. It's mainly the outlet for singer, songwriter, slash multi-instrumentalist John Crosby, and he's got a bit of a creative id that needs to be exercised. Otherwise, he seems to he seems to greatly suffer from when he's not having a chance to explore his creativity. So this was actually created through not committee per se, but what was done was it was produced in sets of four EPs and the audience were able to vote on what were their favourites on those EPs and that's what ended up on um, side A as it were, which is what we'll be discover discussing today. The whole reason for this is John Crosby saw the advantages of utilising the internet and the great resource that is Facebook and wanted to experiment with how he could fully interact with the audience. He says here, um, after they are recorded there is no longer an option to have the feedback influence the, al the album. That is the key thing that I believe has never been done before. Which, as far as I know, I mean, this was way back in 2014, and I can't think of... Like, I've... In, I've I know plenty of instances of audience-selected songs for set lists of gigs and things like that, but I can't think of any other instances I've come across where the audience is actively able to decide what goes where. So for the first time in a while I will be going for favourite and least favourite, and in this case it was tricky to pick out my favourite because there were three of them that were really strong contenders, those being again and again, there is no tomorrow, and the fire of love, but ultimately my favourite was the fire of love. Now it does feel like a bit of a backhanded compliment to say that the last track on side A was my favourite on there, because it's sort of like that old punchline to the joke, what is your fav what was your favourite part of it? The end. But no, I genuinely mean it. This was my favourite track on the album because it's got these really cool effects going through that sort of emphasise the message of waiting and searching for love. It's got very cool bass-driven movement going on. Uh, there's these cool sort of harmonised and syncopated vocals running throughout that really feel like a sort of conversation is going on. Um, it just really feels like they're driving the message forward of waiting and searching and wondering if the love will come back. It almost feels like a response to Winter In My Heart, which is from their nude album originally and re-recorded for Crimson. It's, it's like it's going, well, we're past that stage of thinking that we'll never love again and the person we'll love will never come back. And now we're 
we're at the point where we can go, well, we're not certain of anything that will happen, but I can always hold out hope. And it's really, it really resonates with me on that sort of level. It, it's sort of going, well, even if they don't come back, I still have hope that I'll see things through and I'll, I'll have another love. Now, I have to say, it's rare for me to agree with the majority, but in this case, I wholeheartedly do. This was a great track and a really effective round out to side A. Lee's favourite track on side A would have to be Like God. Very musically proficient, it can't be emphasised enough how skilled the members of Vast are, but as it progresses after the first verse and chorus, it acquires this strange degradation in sound quality. I can't tell whether that was intentional or whether it was a consequence of poor production facilities at the time. It really becomes quite distracting and I, it's frustrating because overall it would technically be a good song but it needs to not have the sort of graininess that it acquires after the first verse. All your emptiness takes me in It makes me love you more All your shouts breaks me in And it makes me want you more. It kind of reminds me of some of the live recordings that they've done with people like the BBC and whatnot, where it's not sounded good. I mean, John Crosby's vocals have always sounded somewhat drowned out in those recordings, and the same can be said on Like God. So it's, it's a frustrating listen because you're sort of like, okay, I kind of like this, but at the same time, I'm really distracted by how you've by the treatment that this song has received. You make me feel like you make me feel like Not going to give my score just yet, I'm going to wait for covering the B-side. Suffice to say, it's an interesting thought experiment and definitely shows potential. Unfortunately, what does detract from it is there's a slight jarring nature with the song progression because it's been audience selected as opposed to chosen by the band or the production company. It does make you feel sort of off kilter at times, but overall each of the songs, with the exception of Like God, is very solid and I'd highly recommend listening to them. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully there will be a tomorrow.